conversion of galvanometer into an ammeter. A galvanometer is a device used to detect the flow of current in an electrical circuit. Even though the deflection is directly proportional to the current, uh, the galvanometer scale is not marked in amperes. Being a very sensitive instrument, a large current cannot be passed through the galvanometer as it may spoil or damage the coil. However, a galvanometer is converted into an ammeter by a low resistance which is connected in parallel, parallel with it. As a result, when a large current flow in a circuit, only a small fraction of the current passes through the galvanometer and the remaining larger portion of the current passes through the low resistance. The low resistance connected in parallel with the galvanometer is called shunt resistance and the scale is marked in amperes. The value of shunt resistance depends on the fraction of the total current required to be passed through the galvanometer. Let Ig is the maximum current that can be passed where the current passed through the shunt resistance is I minus Ig. The total current is I minus Ig is the current passed here. The current Ig will give full deflection in the galvanometer. So the galvanometer resistance is considered as G and the shunt resistance is considered as S. And the current in the circuit is I. So current through the shunt resistance IS is equal to I minus IG into S. Since the galvanometer and shunt resistance are in parallel, the potential is common, the voltage is common. So IG is a current through the galvanometer into G is equal to I minus IG into S. So S equal to IG into G divided by I minus IG. The shunt resistance is very small because IG is only a fraction of I. The effective resistance of the ammeter RA, G is parallel S, right, is given by 1 by RA is equal to 1 by G plus 1 by S. So, RA is equal to G into S divided by G plus S. Here, the RA is very low and this explains why an ammeter should be connected in series. When connected in series, the ammeter does not appreciably change the resistance and current in the circuit. Hence, an ideal ammeter is one which has zero resistance. 